Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Friday, the 16th of July, 2021. Glad to have you guys here. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The way that we think about government and the world leaders out there, we look at them like a unit, like the way government functions and everything. We look at it like it's like it's one unit of one mind, and it makes decisions you know, that affect us, and and that's the way we look at it. But actually, what the real truth is, is government and world leaders are made up out of individuals, and they don't all see the same ideas the same way. So we're looking at them, and we're thinking that they all see ideas the same way, and they make decisions the same way, And but in real truth, they're all separate individuals within the government, and they all have different ideas and different plans and different and different things they want to do. And so the government is actually organized confusion because of all these different opinions and different ideas. Now, within the financial system, part of the government, you know, which would be the Fed and the Fed board members and everything, you know, and then they have their big chief, big cheese, you know, they don't all think the same way. There's enough out there right now who have the way of thinking that, you know, inflation's getting too high. They're thinking. They're thinking we're going to have hyperinflation if we're not careful. We've got to balance the budget. We've got to do, have constraints and all. Uh, this is a way of thinking. And then there's another group out there who's past all that. They've logically moved to the next step, and they realize that deflation will take the system down. But a lot of these people are in power, and they got that way of thinking. Well, we got to manage this. We can manage this. We can uh, balance things out, and we can get uh, back on physical restraint, you know. And we can uh, we can control physical pol physical po physical spending and all, all this kind of stuff. In other words, they're conservative with the financial system and they, they think that we can go through a tightening process at some point in the future and everything. Now all this is la la land. I know it's la la land. You guys know it's not la la land. You know you guys know we're past the point of no return. And if we do try to but there's enough of them out there who think that way. Who think we can stabilize the system in the future and we can get things back on track. This is the way they think. There's enough of them out there that they can put policies in place in the upper part of the financial system, behind the scenes, that can constrain the growth of money and stuff, you know. And there's enough of them out there that can cause this, cause a, well, the money needs to grow exponentially now. It wants to deflate. Everything wants to deflate. And I think that for this conversion, for the ones out there who think we can balance the budget and we can get everything back on track, this conversion is going to be a hard conversion because they're going to allow deflation to happen to a certain degree before they're converted to the church of, of let's spend unrestrained. Let's just go ahead and dump the money out there. They're going to have to make a, a change in their way of thinking. A fundamental change in their way of thinking is going to have to come about because there's a lot of them out there who think that they can keep this system stabilized through being conservative with money printing and stuff, and they can start to balance everything back out again, and the Fed can tighten and everything. There's enough of them out there. They have to be converted over, the, over to the church of let's spend all we want. Because the real truth is, if they start to cut back and everything, we're going to completely melt down. What they did in 2008, when we entered, when we came out of the world's biggest financial crisis that killed the system, it destroyed, it destroyed the system. Ever since then till now, it's too late. It was too late after two, the 2008 event happened, and they pumped the system full of money, and they, they've created all this leverage. And the uh, uh, derivatives, which is a weapon of, of financial destruction, it's too late. 
They, they, they can't get it through their head. They can't realize it. The system's already dead. And you could have a sudden death of the system if you let it deflate. And so they need to change their way of thinking into modern monetary theory is the only way to go now to keep the system structurally sound and keep it from completely melting down. And if you guys know what an SHFT is, no, SHTF, <laughs> sorry guys, but that that's what deflation can do. If they let the entire system deflate, it can deflate so fast. It's a sudden, it's a sudden sort of a thing that's going to cause the world to go into complete haywire chaos. It would be a sudden thing, and inflation is not sudden. Deflation can be. Deflation has that potential, and so these guys out there who think that oh we're we're going to change the system, we're going to bring back things back under control, it's too late for that. It's time they learned. It's too late. The system's pumped up too big. You can't let it fail. you got to keep going forward with this until its final conclusion. And then you can do a reset of some sort or another. But it, it's going to involve an awful lot of chaos, what's coming in the next few years. Because they've really, really screwed up the monetary system. We should be, and we should have been, on hard money all along. We should have never left hard money. This is crazyville, what they've created. And it's going to be a worldwide crazyville where all of the fiat currencies all go down together because they're, they're all worthless. They're, they're just... They're, they're, they're like something abstract. They're just digits on a screen. The whole world's being run this way. This is the biggest mistake that's ever been made in human history, but it has to be seen through to completion because if you let it deflate suddenly, that shock will bring the whole system down. You gotta let it you gotta let this play out slowly with inflation and then start working to bring it under control. They should be trying to bring it under control now. They should be establishing some sort of a hard money system. They should make some sort of a new digital dollar, but peg it directly to gold so that you can convert it into gold. In other words, yeah, maybe you got it on your phone, your new money, the new digital dollar. But you can take those and you can exchange them directly for gold. And that they'd have tremendous purchasing power because they are gold backed. Gold backed, not just in saying, okay, we got this gold here, maybe in Fort Knox, and we're backing it with gold, but you can't convert them to gold. No, make them so that you can exchange them directly for gold. So if, you, if you've got these credits on your phone, Central bank digital currency. You can go in and say, "Hey, you know, uh, each one, each one of these is worth a half an ounce of gold or whatever. I want the gold." And they would slide the gold across the desk to you. Go back to being convertible to gold. They need to peg the currency directly to something precious metals, gold and silver. They need to make gold and silver money again too. So, so what they really need to do to get out of this crisis, what they really need to do is. They need to mint new gold coins that are worth the same value as the as the uh, central bank digital currency that's in your digital currency wallet. So so that you could use a coin as a physical representation of the digital currency. Say you didn't have your phone with you and you had a, a coin in your pocket. You could use that. Or you could use the, the dollars that's on your phone. And, and suddenly... Uh, have it so that as we enter into this hyperinflation, that that's what we reach out to for value to use as a means of exchange. And what they could do is they could make it so that we would slowly make this transition over to hard money again, not suddenly. I don't know, maybe have a limited release of these new gold-backed digital currency, you know, and, and so that 
companies and organizations and everybody out there who has liquidity could start to buy into these but make it limited so that they could do it on, on a certain time scale so that the whole system doesn't crush immediately. They need to do something because we're headed toward chaos ultimately. The hyperinflation will, will create, will generate huge problems down the road maybe two or three years from now. But if they want to let this system deflate, we're headed for chaos almost immediately. Either way, chaos is something coming unless they do something to intermediate this situation, to, to, to stem it off. They're in charge. They need to come up with a plan. You know, I mean, if I was, if I, if I was in charge and I was coming up with a plan for this, you know, you know what I would do? I'd start minting tiny little gold coins and silver coins, the size of a dime. This is what I would do, you know. And they would, they would be the equivalent in value to a new central bank digital currency. And I'd do this conversion in a limited fashion so that it would it would wouldn't be all at once it would be like uh come by this currency or these gold coins but you're only allowed to have so many if you're a corporation or whatever and distribute them out there in a orderly fashion and then they would start to become the new money but they would have a hard backing to gold and silver and they would be convertible to gold and silver and so it, it would be easy to carry them as coinage, you know, if you had a little coin purse, you could carry a lot of money in it and in a physical form, but you could also have your money on your digital wallet too, and it would be equal. You know, in other words, it would be, and what would happen is, is, is businesses and companies and, and the financial system would slowly make this conversion over to this new hard money to get us out of the high, it's, I can't, I'm just thinking of this on the cuff, you know, off, off of my head. What can they do to get out of this situation that they're in? Because this is leading, this is a dead end road we're on. This is a cul-de-sac. This is a dead end. It, it, you can't get out of it. Unless you get out of it, it's going to lead to chaos in the end, either by hyperinflation or by deflation. You know, and it's going to lead to chaos. In the world, this is a financial Armageddon that it's leading us toward, and they have to come up with a plan of some sort to get us out of this mess, or we're going to see things that that defy imagination in, in, over the next five or five years or so, because our money is corrupted. And they're the ones that corrupted it. Well, not them in particular, their ancestors. Because this goes back a long way. This goes all the way back. And, you know, it was said that, that by deflation or by inflation, that they would we would end up being sitting on the curb or, and, and not having a house or not having any money or not having any food to eat. We were a rich country. You know, uh, I mean... Only one person in the family would have to work, you know, and could support the entire family and, and save money every month. And then we've seen it slowly disintegrating into poorness. Where two people were working for a long time there, you know, during the, uh, from the year 2000 to about 2015. Two people in the family would have to work, but they could still support the family. Now, it's gone beyond that. It's, it's, it's getting worse all the time. And, and every, your paycheck from beginning of the month to the end of the month now doesn't last the whole thing. So what people are starting to do is they're starting to use their credit cards in order to make it to one end of the month to the other. But that's increasing their debt, their personal debt to credit card companies. They, you can only go so far with all of this. And the system's going to want to suddenly deflate. They got to do something. I I don't have the answers, but you know, I mean, uh, I'm just one guy, and I'm coming up with a plan there about going back to hard money. But the, to me, I only see that as the only solution. You got money has to have value. You just can't print it to infinity and and throw it out there to all your buddies. 
on Wall Street without it causing some sort of chaos in the end. Anyway, let's get started. Let's get into the markets. Let's open up the charts right here. Uh, take a look at silver today. Uh, they're going to break this. It's down 74 cents today. And we got almost no physical out there. I mean, physical, the, the demand's been crazy. Uh, they, they got limited supplies everywhere, physical silver. But they're going to knock the price in half? What do you think's going to happen? You're going to run out. Yeah. You can't put something on sale and mark the price down lower and lower where it's, when it's something that everybody wants without the store shelves going empty. You know? It's like if you had a supermarket, you know, and you had a meat aisle, you know, and if you knock those prices half off sale today, well, the next day you come in, half the meat's gone. And then the next day they go a three-quarter off sale, well, the shelves would all be bare. There wouldn't even be uh, soup bones left. It would all be gone. And that's the way with silver. <laughs> you knock this price down like crazy glue. And what's going to happen? They're going to come in to buy it. Of course, it's on sale. But there's hardly any left. They want to break the market so there's none left? And uh, if there's none left, if people start to see that, you know, uh, they go and try to buy it and they can't, that's when people really want it. People always want what they can't have. You know, it's just human psychology is the fact that if, if there starts to actually become a real, real physical silver shortage where there's none available out there, everybody's going to want it. The orders are going to come in like crazy. And uh, so look at what they're doing. 75 cents down today. It's ridiculous whole world's going nuts right now. <laughs> Weather's going nuts. You know, uh, viruses, there's all kinds of stuff going on, craziness. It's like in the last couple of years, it's like the world's lost stability and the financial system's unstable today. It's unstable. That's why we're seeing this massive volatility in the silver price. Instability in the financial system. Gold today. Down $19.40 to 18.10. Now let's take a look at crypto. Crypto's at 13.01. It was briefly there in the 1200s. Uh, we're looking at 31,900, well, 31, 32,124 for Bitcoin. Uh, really doesn't want to go below 30,000. Let's take a look now at the Dow Jones today, and it's off 111 points at 34,875. Now we're going to check crude oil. 71.77 for crude oil. It's bounced back some. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you guys what. This is an oil-based economy, so that's why we watch the price of oil on here. Uh, bonds and rates today. Nope. Where are they? Okay, here they are. We're looking at rising yields. Ten-year. 1.31. It's up 1.3 basis points. U.S. 30 years at 1.93. It's up 1.9 basis points. Now we're going to check the move index. It's 59.98. No, 56.98, I should say. It's up 2.7% on the day. 2.7 basis points. 2.7 points. 4.98% up, I should say, on the move index. Looks to me like the move index is starting to slowly creep upwards. If we look at the full chart, let me take it out to the six month here. Been pretty much sideways, though, hasn't it, over the last six months, really? Slow upward trend, though, I would say. But you have to go out full six months to see it. Uh. Let's take a look now at the U.S. dollar index, 92.68, and the dollar has slowly gone up today. So we're seeing a strong dollar, you know. Uh, you got to be awful careful right now. If you're investors and you're in all in on dollars, uh, the thing is, is yes, the system wants to deflate. Yes, the dollar could be worth more if the system deflates. And its purchasing power could go up for a very limited period of time. 
they're not going to let it happen. They're not going to let the real deflation, the, the deflation that would send the dollar up to a 120 on a dollar index, they're not going to let that happen. And when they end it, like, it wants to happen. So deflation happens. It may happen suddenly. When they end it, then the power of the dollar can end suddenly. And you could actually get trapped in dollars because uh, the dollar could actually cascade downwards at a rather very quick pace, you know. And you could get trapped in dollars. And, and uh, that's when the real turn of the tide could come for inflation. We could enter into a hyperinflation. And you can get trapped in dollars in a hyperinflation. But right now, everything's topsy-turvy. Thank you guys for listening to the show. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.